All right, welcome everyone, Chris Petrie. We're here doing an extreme beginners video. We're gonna be covering the technique and method of negative shape painting. So we're gonna cover all the details that concern negative shape painting. We'll show you four different uh, paintings, compositions we'll call them, compositions. They're not finished paintings. We're not creating any, you know, uh, stressful high, you know, high end uh, finished paintings right now. We're just gonna be doing compositions, really easy, have fun, get the colors mixed. We're gonna show you the palette. My watercolor Prang Oval 16 set is gonna be on camera at all times. You'll see all the colors being mixed. You'll see all the methods and techniques that we're using here to create these paintings. This will be the first painting, the first composition, showing you negative shape painting, painting around this roof in this building with darker colors. And then voila, the roof appears, the building appears because we're negative shape painting around it. Then after that, we're gonna do the same thing with the boats here. We're gonna create negative shape painting around the boats, have some really fun uh, time with bluish and green colors mixing on the palette and on the painting here. Then for our third painting, we're gonna do flowers. Yes, we're gonna show you how you're gonna paint beautiful uh, daisy-like shape flowers, painting around the whole painting, around the shapes of the petals, negative shape painting. You paint around the fla flower petals and then the sh they appear, the fl flowers and the flower petals appear because we're negative shape painting around them. So you'll see on this uh, composition how we do that. And then on our final composition, we're gonna actually create a street scene, beautiful street scene. We're gonna have figures there, buildings, trees, darks, lights. We're gonna show you negative shape painting with our windows negative shape painting for our figures here in the foreground as well as over here with the trees. And you'll see that all of these compositions give you a good idea and a good feel for negative shape painting, a really powerful method and technique that's used in watercolor by all the top watercolor artists of our time as well as the old masters in history. So don't miss out. Join along with us, go through each of these paintings, have fun, enjoy the process, and uh, we'll get started right in about two minutes and two seconds with our drawing pencil drawings and get right into the painting. All right, so we're gonna get started with our uh, quick pencil drawing and then we'll do some painting. And uh, these uh, compositions are really, again, just to have that uh, practice time on uh, negative shape painting. It's like a thing that uh, most watercolor artists, you'll probably do it occasionally here and there while you're painting. Maybe you don't realize it as much, or maybe you're newer to my channel, or you're new to watercolor, and you might be thinking, well, yeah, I never heard of that term before, negative shape painting, but we'll just describe it here, and we'll, we'll practice on it, and you'll really have a firm understanding of it as we're uh, completing this. Um, so basically, the idea is just, again, uh, painting around an object to make the object appear, or, um, you know, uh, an object will appear if you are painting around the outside borders of that, that object. So... We don't necessarily have to draw in our, let's we'll do just maybe like a small little, um, small little uh, shack or garage, something like that, just a small structure. And uh, maybe we'll have a little foreground here. And then we'll, maybe we'll, okay, so we'll just make that shape. And then what I'll do is I'll go over with a darker pencil line so you can kind of see more of the shape that we did here. So it's basically a, a, rec, a rectangle, but it's got a little bit of um, some flare on the edges of it. So it's basically a rectangle, much like a tissue box shape, something like a tissue box or a dollar bill um, or something like that, a rectangle. And then we just flare out the edges a little bit, maybe like we put a, like almost like, like, like a sailboat, like the sail of a sailboat over here on the on the left side and then a little bit of a slider um, kind of like triangular shape over here maybe a thinner sail of a sailboat over on this side so essentially we could break this down into like three parts to this roof here the roof would be starting out it's like a rectangle shape and then we add on two sails of a sailboat on either end uh, with the flare of the uh, angle going out this way and then a lesser angle going this way and that gives us the feeling of the three-dimensional quality of the roof uh, pitching downward. And then we have the, the structure itself and maybe we'll put uh, a window over here. We'll put a window over here maybe. I'll just loosely draw that in. Uh, again, I'll go with a darker pencil line here. 
so we can kind of see our um, the basic shape of things. And then we'll mix up a little bit of paint here. Let's uh, mix up some, maybe some like summery type feeling for the um, tr trees in the background. So I'm going to go with green. Green, um, the, both of the greens that we have. Some brown in there too. So green and brown. Maybe a little bit of our red too. Maybe I'll mix the red over here. So I'll take some of that red over here and make that kind of interesting looking um, red uh, color that's mixed with the greens and the brown. And then we mix a little red in there. And we have kind of an interesting um, play of colors. Again, we always want to try to mix our colors, mix lots of colors. I'll put a little bit of blue up here and maybe even a little bit of black. If we want a really dark tone, we can use some black in here. And then with the black, I would maybe rinse off my brush first. When I uh, work with black, with the black uh, paint here, it's very, very extremely strong. So what I do is I, I'll have a tissue uh, or a paper towel, and then when I um, mix out some black over here in the paint well, I'll rinse off my brush and then dry off a little bit of that water. And just make sure I have some of that black in case I want a little bit of a darker tonal value in this. Um, so let's mix a little more green and brown. I think we're going to need quite a bit of, of that foliage for the trees. And then even some uh, yellow. And some orange. So now you see we have a really good mixture just for the basically well for the painting because we can just stick with this um, kind of color um, mixtures for the whole entire composition here so what we're looking at is starting out with the greens and the brown for the some of the trees here and then maybe what we'll do is we'll just leave we'll, we'll have fun here we'll just leave the I'll, I'll go up there higher with the trees. But now what we're doing is negative shape painting. We're basically painting around this object, which is the house. The roof is, uh, you know, pointedly. The, the roof is actually... Okay, and then maybe I'll rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, maybe a little bit of blue over here. And we'll lighten up over here for a little bit and then what else can we do we can maybe we can leave a little bit of again negative shape painting we can make a, a fence here by just painting in the lines in between the fence a little bit of that black car color might look really good to kind of so that's we can make a fence over here like that and that again is negative shape painting we're painting the dark trees behind the fence like that and that becomes the fence when we paint those dark colors behind it same as the roof here we paint it around the roof and now look we have the beautiful shape of the roof coming together for us so that's what neg actually this is negative shape painting at its best um, <clears throat> we're just going to continue here um, I'll rinse off my brush, get a little more paint now. Maybe I'll do, I'll do a couple splashes. I just want to get some texture into the painting. And, uh, a couple bits of, uh, maybe some branches and things just to get that feeling of, uh, the trees back here. Okay, and then we can actually make some more green here. Maybe we'll make a little bit of a darker green. Uh, let's add a touch of black. Maybe a little bit of blue. Black. Maybe a touch of brown, too, as well. And then we can actually make a couple, maybe some darker darks back here. That looks really good. 
Could be a couple of pine type trees back here. So that'll make an interesting look over here. And then maybe another bit of dark over here too. Maybe another pine tree over here. And again, some of the touch of black, green, brown, a little bit of blue. You can mix, mix your own colors that you like to get your kind of pine tree colors if you like. But you'll see that this is really a fun exercise. And again, you're, we're actually um, orange and some green. Let's get a shadow under here like this underneath the, the roof. So what we're kind of feeling right now is the sunlight coming from up top here. And we always like to make our insignia of sunlight or spotlight if you're using a light. But we always make our spotlight up here, our uh, icon. Spotlight there. So the light's coming from here up top across the roof. And it's also lighting up the maybe the bottom portion of this the shack over here okay and and maybe over here we have some bushes and we can just do a little bit of sp splashing and some and I'm using this uh, uh, this is really one of my favorite brushes. It's just a simple uh, 5 8 inch uh, Princeton um, flat brush. And this you can get in a set of like six or five or six brushes in one set. And especially if you're just starting out, uh, this is an Extreme Beginner Series video. So um, these brushes, I have everything down below just for, just for, uh, just to mention it. All my art supplies, I always put the list of all my art supplies below in, my, in the comment section. So you can click on those and check out uh, the prices of them, you know, you can shop around, whatever, but I will put all the particular exact, uh, brushes I'll have down below my exact palette papers. I use it's all there. So this way it's kind of like just a list of my supplies that I use. So you can kind of know what's Chris using. Well, you know, I have it all right down there conveniently for you. And, um, especially if you're just starting out, you know, it, it's really frustrating when I first started painting a watercolor, you know, even when I was back very young in my teenage years, you know, buying the uh, the sets like the Bob Ross sets and stuff like that. And then eventually, you know, I lose a brush or something and then I go to f buy one at the store and I'm not sure what to get. Sometimes the store is usually very helpful. If you helpful, if you go out to the the art stores, they're always very helpful. You can get any, you know, they'll explain to you everything too. So if you ever need help with uh, buying art supplies and things, you just go to the local, your local hobby and art supply places and they'll have everything for you there. So we're kind of wrapping this up right now. Again, negative shape painting. I'm painting the grass um, alongside this house, this small um, shack, could be a garage, uh, you know, tool, sh tool shed at someone's house or in a farm here. And uh, I, I painted the grass and then now the bottom of that wall appears. So again, uh, negative shape painting, you're painting around an object and then the object appears, or you're painting a, alongside an object and then the object appears. So I painted the grass here with that dark paint. And then the bottom of that wall appears and, and it gives and it gives this whole sh shed here uh, the shape and describes everything without really having to do a lot of work at that. It kind of just really does a good job of describing the shapes that we're creating. And we have sunlight here in the picture. And then I think the only thing we could do uh, some more of that darker shadow for the windows. Maybe just to have a little bit of fun and Again, these are the most fun uh, fun times when you're watercolor painting is when you're doing compositions because you're just like learning about the medium, 
playing around with color mixes, doing act fun exercises like this. Then we just have some fun. What are we going to do? Let's put some sky wash, just a touch of sky wash. Take just the tiniest bit of blue. Good, good, good. And we do that. Just a few little spots there. A little bit on the roof. Touch of uh, blue on the roof. Doesn't have to be anything. A little bit of orange on the roof too for that warm kind of feeling. The sunlight. A little bit of yellow. A little bit of yellow on the roof. A little bit of yellow on the wall here. Ah, makes, doesn't that look good? That little bit of yellow makes it look like the light is just like warm sunlight on the wall here. It's like a stucco wall. A masonry wall. Maybe this is a masonry building here. And then we just kind of touching a little bit of the bottom of that window. And I meant to do this actually, let me take my uh, tissue or my paper towel, lift up some of that paint for the bottom of the window. And I wanted to add a little blue to the window over here. Uh, and that being, uh, it's the windows are glass and those pick up the light from the sky and also from the grass and the surrounding grass areas. So if I just do a little bit of the green and then the sky color, that actually will make your mind think that you're looking at glass here on these windows. Because in our minds, if we've seen this a thousand times, glass with reflections, you know, glass with reflections of the sky and the trees, if we just put a little bit of green and a little bit of blue, which blue is the sky color up here, and the greens are the trees and, and bushes and all that around the, right away, if you add those little bit of colors in there, does that make sense? Then you'll automatically, someone looking at this will feel right away like, oh yeah, that's glass, that's two windows there, we can see the wall and everything shaping up here with our negative shape painting, which is our goal for this ex this composition and this exercise, this video tutorial, is to let's make sure we use the uh, negative shape painting um, technique when we can, when, when it makes sense to. And if we practice it quite a bit here and there, then when it comes time and you're in the, you're painting and you're painting through your uh, next uh, composition or your next painting, you'll just automatically start to use this method. And it's really fun. It saves you some time having to um, sometimes plan a lot. You know, you can kind of go into a painting and as you're working through it, you can sort of look at things and go, oh yeah, that's a perfect spot. I could make a negative shape paint uh, method technique around this, this rooftop. Just like that. So I hope this is... Um, a helpful exercise and we're going to come up with three more so don't go anywhere we have three more to do we're having fun here and, and let's just take a quick break i like to take a quick break i'm actually going to get a, a drink of uh, some iced tea nice hot sunny day here uh nice ice cold uh, iced tea and we'll keep working all right so we're going to get started again on our second composition and we'll do a boat maybe with some water uh i'll just get my um, palette cleaned up a little bit here. You can see how, how the beautiful colors that we all mixed here for this painting. Uh, you can see that. And uh, that's um, really enjoyable to mix up ahead of time to get our paints mixed up like we did for this composition before we start. Um, I think probably when I first started watercolor painting and you might Maybe I, I can save you a little bit of that uh, issue or headache. Um, I, I used to paint like when I first started very, very, you know, I first started painting watercolor seriously or, you know, I, where I was trying to paint like every weekend and maybe during the week too and nights and things when I first started. Um, you know, I would try to just mix like one color at a time as I was going. And then eventually I just like, someone mentioned it, I forgot who it was, I think. Um, but uh, anyway, I just kind of started learning how to just get some of the colors out first, mix them up on the palette and you know kind of think about the colors as i'm putting them out in relation to what my subject matter is this is just a composition kind of but you know if i was working from a book or a painting or something or a photograph looking at the colors getting them out on the palette at one time and then going in and then putting the paint onto the paper so everything's already worked out ahead of time and then of course um you know 
if you start running out of a color, it's kind of easy to see what colors you created in your palette by just looking at the colors here and say, oh yeah, I need more green. So you put more green in there. Oh, I, I need some more orange. I'll put more orange. In, oh, I need some more blue. I'll put some more blue. I'm running out of it. So you can, you already have like your colors all set up. And then if you have to go back into your palette and mix a little more color and get it into the your uh, palette, that's fine. Works out good that way. And let's start our second composition. We'll just do a simple boat. Why not? So here I'm thinking if I'm just going to make a simple boat shape, um, I'll put it lower in the picture. I'd rather have it lower in the picture. Like so um, with the thought of the boat is sitting like on the water and kind of at more of the bottom of the painting. It depends what you're, if you're doing a full size painting or a larger composition with more things going on and you know boats can be anywhere in, in in your rectangle your painting your composition but for here we're just going to do like maybe one or at most two boats so i'll start the first one here kind of lower in the picture here and i'll just start out with a level line going across so just a level line for the bottom of the boat and then um <clears throat> again if we take the simple idea let's start out with if this is a rectangle, the boat starting out is a rectangle like that, like a tissue box or uh, like a, a dollar bill, just like that simple shape of a rectangle. And then we say, all right, from there, how are we going to create the boat shape from that rectangular shape, which kind of, it looks a little bit like the rectangular shape. It just has some angles to it. And then here, basically the boat's going to be an upside down sail. So here we made an upright sail. So if you, if, does that make sense? If you think of a sail, and uh, maybe I have some scrap paper here, hopefully, somewhere. Oh, yeah, I do. All right, so, like on this painting, we said, well, this was like the roof is basically a rectangle to start with, and then the the um, perspective makes the roof angles come out this way as it gets closer to us. So we just added a what we called like a sail of a sailboat to that rectangle, and then a smaller sail over here because the angle was a little bit less steep so the angle here is like this and the angle here is more steep this way so it's just two sails on the end of a rectangle gives you that perspective of the roof the rooftop now here similarly we have the boat shape so the boat is similar it's how it's a rectangular shape maybe it's a little thinner of a rectangular shape like this and then all we're going to do is just say all right well the the bow of the boat is an upside down um upside down sail shape or triangular shape so we just go like this like that and then across this way and then this over here is another same thing an upside down triangle or an upside down sail sail of a sailboat here just a little bit of a taper to it like that so you can kind of see two upside down sails here like sailboats, and then two right side up sails. And that's pretty much, you can get the um, angles from that. And then over here, it's um, this one's just going to have an angle going this way, pretty much like a uh, 45 degree angle this way. And then maybe a little bit of a, like that for the, uh, the cabin of the boat. And we'll just make a simple boat shape like that. And I think that's good. Maybe a couple windows here. Like that. Something like that. All right, so let's do that upside down sails over here. And an upside down sail here. And then maybe another sailboat over here. I mean, another. Uh, boat here and we'll do the same thing this one will be just a little maybe like a sailboat we'll put a we'll put a line there like that all right so that's about what we're looking at here and then so we can put Maybe a level line across for the distant ocean. Feel free to um, use rulers and things like that if you need to. 
um, to get your level lines. So I'm going to put a level line across here, maybe right here. And I just try to keep it. This would be important to measure. So if you want to get like your ocean here at this point, like this line here, make a mark here, measure what that mark is. So here I'm going to look at it and say that mark from the top is two and a quarter inches down from the top. And then I'll come over here and say, all right, where's two and a quarter inches? Two and a quarter is here because you definitely don't want to have a line like this, a, a, an angular line that's going like this or like this for your water. Your water line always has to be like really dead level. So if you're doing any kind of painting, I know sometimes well, this, I would say the rule is try to always keep your water level if you can. Better to do that. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way, but like that. Okay, so that's our distant ocean, and maybe we'll have a little, maybe um, maybe some distant, uh, you know, hills and things, mountains, maybe like that, something like this, maybe another, like this. All right, so we'll make a composition of these really good-looking boats. We have to finish this one over here, and we'll again we'll make the cabin here, a slight angle that way, like this. Like this, and then like that. And that should be fine. And then we could, you know, put a couple windows here. And this is a sailboat. And then at any time, if you want to change things up a little bit and say, I'm not going to put any windows on there, that's fine too. If you want to keep it really uh, loose and not, you know, this is a composition, of course. So, but uh, it's up to you. You can paint it without the windows or with. And then I would just erase this line here. We're going to leave the boat white. That's why I'm erasing these lines. All right, so let's take another quick break. And uh, also too, I just hope that um, if you like this video, I hope you'll always give me a thumbs up when you're looking at my videos and you find that they're really, um, you like them and you think they're um, <clears throat> helping you to paint a little better each time we get together. And also too, I hope you'll consider subscribing on the right hand side below, there's a button that says subscribe. And all that does is next time when you open up YouTube, you'll just see whenever we create new videos, it'll, YouTube will just let you know uh, um, on the side of your um, YouTube homepage, you'll just see a little small picture of my next video and it'll, it'll say, you know, Chris made a new video or it'll just show you this is something new that, that I've created a new video. So I don't want to, I don't want you to miss any of my videos. I want you to keep working with me and working with all this together. So if you subscribe, you won't miss a thing. And all you have to do is click subscribe. And then I think you got you can click the button that says, uh, you know, all, all subscriptions or, or, you know, um, it gives you an option, but usually I click all subscriptions. When I follow somebody on YouTube myself, I'll always click all subscribe or, or, or all videos so that I can, whatever videos, the person that I'm going to be watching, I want to see all of them whenever they come out. So <clears throat> in any case, excuse me again, <clears throat> Had a bit of a cold the last couple of weeks. Actually, it's been a month already now. Getting better, though. Feeling better. Hope you're all doing well out there. Feeling good. Feeling, uh, you know, healthy. And um, so let's, again, take a quick break. And we'll come right back. We'll mix up some more paint. And we'll get our second uh, composition going. All right. So let's move on down the line here. And uh, we'll start mixing our paints for our next uh, composition. And I uh, cleaned up the palette. I poured fresh, clean water. So now in my water bucket, I have fresh, clean water. <clears throat> Crystal clear water. Um, we'll take some blue. A lot of blue. So uh, for the ocean colors, uh, instead of just going with one blue, let, why not? Let's have lots of mixtures of blues. Let's do this blue here which is kind of like a cerulean this one here is more or less like a french ultramarine blue then let's add a little bit of green down here we'll make a greenish blue here which is just um leaving the blue that was in my brush picking up some more green and getting like a bluish green there 
And then also, too, a little bit of um, orange here with some uh, brown. And then some blue with that. Just to give like a little bit of a warm touch of uh, color to our little bit of red. Orange. A little bit of a warm kind of mix. So you can kind of see I'm mixing up all the colors ahead of time. And then up here, um, brown, blue, maybe purple. Let's use some purple there for those distant mountains. Purple, since we're using some purple up here for those distant mountains and even some black, I'll leave some black up here too. Maybe some purple should work its way into the rest of the colors here. Just a little bit of it. So if you kind of mix all your colors and then all of a sudden you say, oh, I want to add purple to it. Perfect. Take your purple, add some purple. But then just remember, add a little bit of that purple to these other colors too. Just a little touch of it like that. Um, so that all the colors sort of uh, harmonize together. Now, at this point, um, let's start out with the sky. This painting we kind of did a la prima, uh, a la prima method, which means we just painted this all at one time. We're going to do the same thing here on this painting. A la prima, all at one time. We're not going to do any glazing. We'll just add a little bit of water up to the sky up here. Like that. Just a little bit of, take some fresh clean water, add it up to the sky, wash, and then add some of that blue, the blue color. Like that. Add maybe some of the orange, the grayish color here, the orange and the, and the purple and the brown a little bit. And sometimes you'll find that watercolor is really works best when it's you just kind of do it quick and free and fun. Um, try it out. I'm holding my brush pretty high up here, and I'm just you can see I'm kind of just scrubbing around um, like this. Again, adding some a little bit of just like that. Add a little more water to it, maybe. Let the colors mix and mingle. Sp splash some water on there. <clears throat> that should be fine. Next thing we're going to do is, again, like we said, uh, negative shade painting is the main uh, concept we're learning here in this is this bit of um, of our our tutorial here. So I'm just working these sky washes on down like that. Good, very good. And let's now. Take our blue, we mixed up lots of blue. A little bit of purple there. A little bit of orange down here. Lots of blue though. I'll put a little more water. I'll take some water off my brush and put, put a little more. So you, you can kind of see how now, a little more puddle of water here. And then we're going to start to get our water in here like this. And we're going to negative shape paint right around those boats. So now we paint around the boat and the boat appears. And this one too. We paint around the boat and the boat appears. And there's maybe some white uh, reflections under this. So leave some white paper under the boat. Leave some white paper too for your water. There might be some white caps here and there, uh, some waves, things like that. We wouldn't want to paint every single bit of paint. Leave some white paper. You can always paint over it if you want to, for your um, for your own discretion. You can you can leave white paper in your painting anytime you want to, and you can always just go over it if you want to at a later time. But once you paint over it, the white paper, you're not you you could re does that make sense? You know, once you paint over the white paper with wash. There's no way of like regaining your white paper. So if you want to, so I'll leave some reflections here for the boat. Like this in the water. And, and we always know that when you closer to us in the painting, so in the foreground here, right where it's very close to us, that's always um, green, a little bit of green. That's always the darkest colors, the most rich colors like this. 
So I'm going to put in lots of rich color here. Greens and, and uh, blues and even a little bit of orange too to get a nice really dark. Oh, look how good that looks. There we go. And then I just go across. I'm using the same brush I was using for the first painting, the 5 8 inch Princeton Art and Brush Company synthetic uh, flat brush. Then I rinse my brush off, pick up some more blue. And again, we're painting around the subject. And then the subject appears. Like that. And you have some time to add in more color to your to your washes. Like this. How does that look so far to you? Pretty good. Alright, now we'll take a little bit of water and splash it on to the paper. Clean, fresh, clean water. And then just splash on some water to give it that watery look. And then maybe a little bit of shadow here, a little bit. And if you see a spot or two that gets, you know, out of control, no big deal. Try to blot it up. Well, that's a little bit of um, shadow anyway. So let's put the shadow over here. A little bit of shadow over here too. Maybe a little more shadow there too as well. And maybe there's a light. Maybe there's not too much of a reflection over here. Maybe we have the light coming from a different light source. And that's where putting your light source in always helps. So the light's actually coming from this direction this way. So we could take our, preferably we do this in the beginning. We say that's our light source coming from this side over here, going this way. And then I maybe, <clears throat> I shift over to a smaller flat brush. So you can see this one here is a little bit smaller. I happen to found, I found this over on my uh, art table where I uh, have all my brushes and uh, there's no name on this brush, but it's just a small flat brush, maybe like a eighth of an inch. And we can take that and just maybe make a couple windows here. Like that. And don't worry about it if you lean into your paint a little bit. Watercolor is a messy medium you can, and just let it be messy. And if you don't think it's messy, just make it messy and then you don't have to ever worry about it again. Splash on a few splashes, grab some paint, do some splashing like this, a couple up there in the sky, a couple down here in the water, you know, make your painting have lots of texture to it. That's more interesting to look at a painting, in my opinion. Does that make sense? I don't know, maybe some of you want to have a little more, you know, you're, you're, you want to have your painting look a little more like, uh, you know, not as much uh, loose fun with the splashes and things like this that's fine you know paint the way you want to paint you're the artist always remember that you're the artist you create the paintings the way you want to i'm just showing you what my methods and techniques are in watercolor and then you can take it to whatever push it in any direction you want to basically i'm just big on a lot of times showing like you know techniques methods to to you know in watercolor not so much um having a certain exact look that you're going to have to have that your your own art is your own is the way you paint the way you like your paintings to look i like mine a certain way but not everybody's going to want to look like my paintings 
Okay, so you can see we painted around the object, the boat. The boat appeared the same over here. Uh, let's do those distant mountains and then we're going to have a completed composition right now. Ah, oh, look how good that looks. Purple, the purple, cool, distant color of that purple. That looks just perfect. Look at that. Good. Good. Looks good. And we do a little bit over there, over here, over there, everywhere. Like this. Okay. And that to me is I just blend in a few edges like that. Okay, it's not the best boat I've ever painted. Maybe this one. I like this one better. I think that one turned out better, actually. I like that one a lot, actually. But in any case, don't worry about it. If your boat doesn't come out, per you know, maybe this one comes out great. This one doesn't come out the best. Whatever, you know. We're doing compositions here anyway, so that's the fun of it. When you're doing compositions like this, you're not out to paint a finished painting, a painting that's going to go in a gallery or that you're going to put into a show or anything like that. We're just painting to learn the techniques and methods of watercolor. And right here, we, we did exactly like we did here. We got our shape of the boats in, and we painted around our boats. And we got the shape of the boat, the negative shape painting of around the boat with the water, painting that blue water around the boat. The boat appeared, and it popped really nice, just like the roof in this building pops really nice in here. And, uh, and the same way with your boat. Um, you know, you can change the light source if you want to. So you can make the light coming from this way going into the picture this way and leave the boat all completely white and maybe put some shadow on this front of the boat here. So you can play around with like fun ideas with light and shadow in your compositions that you do like this, you know, to kind of just practice up on um, light and shadow where they're coming from. That's up to you. You know, you could put a couple of figures in the boats if you wanted to. But we'll just leave this one here because, again, again, we're practicing that real fundamental watercolor, you know, uh, go-to technique and method of negative shape painting. And we're going to do two more. We're going to keep going here and uh, having fun. So let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come right back and we'll start working on our third composition of negative shape painting. All right, let's continue on. Let's do our third composition. I'll take some white uh, printer paper and just cover over the top here so that it doesn't uh, distract us too much with the um, paintings up above. And I'll take a little scotch tape and I'll just scotch tape this down to my working surface here just so it doesn't uh, move around on us while we're working. Okay, that looks good. Maybe one more. Okay, looks good. Okay, next let's do some flowers. Why not do some flowers? Everyone really enjoy. Most people enjoy flowers. I noticed um, my videos that I where I create flower compositions and paintings. A lot of people really like those. They usually tend to. Uh, um, a lot of people like to watch those and work on those um, videos uh, tutorials. So let's do that. Um, I'll, again, I'll find my pencil over here. Where did that go? All right. I'll start with a new pencil over here. So the first thing I'll do is just maybe we'll get a quick, um, some pencil lines for some flowers, maybe some, um, I don't know, maybe these might be like the, um, I think what uh, type of flowers we should draw. Um, well maybe some, maybe like some, uh, daisy type flowers. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start out and just I'll put that daisy type shape up there, kind of like a circle. And then just uh, get some of the shapes like this. Like that. A stem there. So I would just say if you if you're kind of following along, 
you know, we're just going to have some fun. Make a couple flower shapes, that's all really, as we go here. And uh, maybe another one over here, lower in the picture frame. And then there's another bit of uh, petals here. And this. Over there, like that. Like this here. So stems, a couple stems here and there. This will be more loose and fun, this type of composition. Um, we'll do another look over here. So you just kind of see I'm doing some flower petals shapes and that's about it. So if you can get two or three flower uh, flowers in this composition kind of like daisy shapes with the um, center of the flower about here here and here and then we make some flower petals you could use um, the idea of some uh, any kind of daisy type shapes anything like that should be fine any flowers you would like here you could use any use any of your favorite flowers that you might like to paint and draw, you can use in this composition. What we're going to do is just kind of cover the idea of the negative shape painting for these flowers in particular in this composition, in this painting. So pretty much we have, um, we have the main idea here of some flower petals and flower shapes. And then we're going to, again, we'll go to our same paintbrush that we've been using, the 5 8 inch uh, flat brush. I'll make sure I uh, empty my water bucket and get fresh clean water. So I'll do that first thing. As well, let me spritz the um, palette and we'll clean up our palette and get brand new color out on our palette. But before we do that, we must clean the palette first. So I like to use the uh, Holbein spritzer bottles. I have that below, and you know, in the comments section below, you'll see I have the Holbein spritzer bottle uh, link there, so you can link to Amazon and purchase these. These are great for you know for your spritzer bottle for spr you know spritzing your paints, which we're going to do right now too as well. And um, we're going to use some paper towels here to uh, just. Tidy up our palette here. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I don't want you to think that I'm making, you know, or each time I clean my palette that I'm doing a perfect job of it. As long as you get the, the, the majority of the paint washes off of there, that's fine. Like that, that's good. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to take this to the sink and be scrubbing it and all that. You know, that's a waste, you know. Don't worry about doing something like that. That's a waste of time. I mean, if you wanted to do that, that's fine. If you really want to be very fussy, that's fine too. I used to do that. I used to always wash my palettes down in the in the slop sink and get them really, really pristine clean. But at this point in time, I realize, you know, if, as long as you, we get the majority of the paints that we've just used for the last composition kind of, you know, cleaned up, we're, we're fine. This is perfect. Now, again, we're going to use the same brush we've been using this whole time, the 5 8 inch uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company wash brush, 5 8 inch flat brush, fresh, clean water, Let's mix our colors. We're going to make this kind of a golden, um, warm painting. So we're going to kind of dominate the whole painting with a warmer color, like gold. So we could even do a quick offshoot on this paint composition and say, the main thing we're doing here, of course, is we're doing the negative shape painting. That's the key. We wanted to keep working with that same idea in our minds. Each composition, as we go, we're using the... the negative shape painting concept of painting around something and that object appears. We're going to be painting around these flower petals and those flower petals are going to appear. That's the fun thing. Then on a secondary note, we can also say too here, another uh, really cool idea about watercolor is you can kind of give your painting like a um, dominant um, feel to it. 
And what I mean by dominant is if you can come up with some ideas, it doesn't matter, it could be any kind of idea, but if you can have something in your painting that is dominating, whether it's colors or shapes or angles or colors, whatever it is, that's also a really good, positive, um, pleasant way to create a painting where people are going to really notice your paintings and be like excited by your paintings if it's got a dominant feature could be a, like again a dominant color or a dominant um feature uh, a dominant type of technique to it like uh, you're going to dominate with maybe the angles in your painting you're all going to see the same angles maybe it's maybe the wind or some kind of angle with architecture whatever it is you can come up with different ideas but here we're going to do we're going to have a dual mandate for ourselves we're going to do two things now we're going to do one negative shape painting which is the theme of this video and two we're going to kind of just show how you can use color as a dominant force in your painting to make your painting look more pleasant positive pleasing looking and something that's really going to kind of people are going to take a second look at so let's do it um let's take our paint and do a little bit of uh, damp dampening of the paper here and there around now what I'd like to do is kind of show you that you can actually really have a successful time at painting around these objects, doing negative shape painting by actually taking a small round brush like this. This happens to be my Simply Simmons number no. 9 round brush. Um, great. I have this in the comments below. This I have this links of, to, for this brush, I think, are down below. Or it's easy to find anyway. It might not be in the links below, but it's a, like it looks like a pearl, pearl finish, a white pearl finish. It's a Simply Simmons brush, round brush. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually dampen the paper around the petals of these daisy-type flowers. So if you can dampen the paper just a little bit around... So actually, right now, we're negative shape painting with a damp brush and water around these flower shapes. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to make sure that when you are painting this painting, you're not going to go um, over those petals with paint, if you're careful. And this gives you a more successful chance to not do that. So I'm even going around these stems. I'm going to try to leave these stems white paper. So I'm painting right next to the stems with damp brush. And I keep going back to my clean water, tapping off my brush a little bit. You could tap off some water on a uh, sponge or a tissue, paper towel. If you have an apron on, you can tap your brush on your apron. I tap on my water container. And this is what I'm doing. I'm actually painting clean water around the petals, the outsides of the petals of the flowers and the stems. So I want those all to remain white. White paper. I want those to stay white paper. So you're painting around those areas and around the top here too. And again, I'm just painting around those petals. You can see I'm going right around Perfect. Good. Now, we'll take our flat brush again. Let's get our colors mixed. We're going to use those golden colors like we were saying before. So we're going to do yellow, oranges, some red over here, maybe some red down here. some brown, and some black even. Red and black, like that. So red and black, or just use brown and red and then add a touch of black to it just to darken it up like that. And um, what else do we would we want here? We can we can actually we want warm and cool every well warm and cool doesn't have to be everywhere. We'll have a little touch of some cool colors like this, purple and blue. 
So we put some purple and blue up top here, like this. Purple and blue up top. But the majority of our painting is going to be the golden color. We're going to want a gold. That's going to dominate the gold color, yellow and gold. Lots of yellow and gold. I dip my paint brush in the water and add some water to that there. And there we go. Now we're off to the races. <laughs> and this is fun, right? Watch this. You just carefully paint around everything, but you don't have to be too careful because we've already dampened the paper over here on these sections around the flower petals. And you can pick up some orange, mix in some orange as you go. And this is all about now we're having fun with our colors. They're already pre-mixed in our palette. So you don't have to worry. You're going to actually just be cruising along through your painting. You're careful when you go around your petals as you paint. But now we're going to see that dominate your painting with your gold colors and your warm colors, oranges and things like this. Orange, and, but mostly gold. Let's make this a gold style painting with lots of gold colors, yellows, warm colors, like this. Maybe get a little bit of more water, splash on some water, like this, splash on some water. Does that not look good? Go straight into your colors, into your yellow, in your palette. Get some of that straight yellow on there. And now we're doing negative shape painting, right? We're painting around the object, and the object is appearing. The white petals of those flowers. And we can change the colors of those flowers if we wanted to. The petals of these flowers. But I think we're going to leave them white. And you can go over some of them. Make a little bit of shadow on some of the petals. We'll, we'll come back to that, though, for the shadows. But you can see how we're doing this. We're dominating the entire painting with gold. A little bit of splashing, right? Now, I see a couple things here. I want to just fill in these little areas here around the petals. Using this brush here, 5 8 inch synthetic flat brush by Princeton Art and Brush Company. Again, all my art supplies, I'm not trying to be a secretive artist and hide things from you. All my art supplies are down below. Only the things that I use that I've used for many years that I know work really well, I'm going to put in there. In my uh, links to those uh, purchases, if you're going to make some purchases. Alright, now we're going to get some of those darks. Some of the orangey, like this. Look how good that looks. Wonderful. Look how good that looks. Now, a little bit of purple and blue just here and there for some shadow colors and a little bit of the, um, what I would say, um, you, we want to have that a little bit of that counter balance to the painting of some cool colors, some shadow colors. So maybe some of these tips of the flowers over here and under here, maybe a few here and there, are going to have a little bit of shadow. And then maybe we can even take a little bit of that blue and splash a couple of bits of blue in our painting. And then you can take some fresh clean water with your brush and just dilute that blue a little bit, the spots, if you're going to do some splashing. You can, you know, kind of like tone down those splashes, but you have to, I guess what I'm saying here is if you are going to do some splashing and add some extra water to your painting to have that wa really beautiful watery look, you have to actually do it quickly though. As you can see here, we're kind of working pretty fast. So it's hard to do if you're taking your time. So if you're going to be taking a lot of time um, with your paintings, and working slower, then you have to just be a little more careful with um, adding washes to wet paper. So you could do some sections and let them dry. And maybe we'll do that on the next composition. We'll talk about um, working with the glazing technique and letting things uh, dry 
as you work because that can be a real help to you, especially if you're new at watercolor. And I thank you if you're brand new at watercolor and you're here for the first time, welcome. It's great to see you here. I'm glad you're working along with us. We are having an absolute fun time as you can see. I'm putting a couple dark, cool colors alongside the warm gold colors that we have. And you can even um, get some black, mix that with some uh, purple. Black and purple and look a little bit of the brown here, maybe we'll mix. And then just see if you can get in a couple dark, bits of dark here. If you can add in a little touch of little bit of darks. Like that. If you can add some, just the like the littlest bit of some of that dark black, or some just a touch of black with some of the purple and brown, that does really look good. Because then you get the whole range of tonal values where you have light lights, the lightest lights you can ever have are your white paper, right? And we have that. We have the whitest whites you can, or the lightest brights in your painting you can ever have are the white of the paper. That's one thing, right? And then you can also mix up some of those really, really dark darks with using just a little tiny bit of the black. You have to be really careful with that black paint because it is very strong. But you can add a little bit of that black black to any of your colors that you want to. Maybe, like, like I said, I added some of that black black to the the red and orange maybe and then you can counteract at any time you can go back in and add and infuse some red and orange over the top of that black to you know kind of give it more of that beautiful red and orange kind of look but also to leave some of that black paint there which is kind of like that shadowy color underneath and then again, you can add some of that black shadowy, just little bits of shadow maybe here and there. And that is it. Let it go. Let it dry. I think that's it. I think that's a complete painting right there, having fun with some flower shapes. And we will come back and we'll do one more painting again. Negative shape painting is the focus of this uh, tutorial. And the main thing is we want to make sure that by the time we've done one, two, three, and four of these compositions, you will have this locked in your mind, the negative shape painting concept. And I guarantee you, you'll start to use it. If you've done four of these compositions like this, that should be enough that the next time, whether it's a couple weeks from now, a month from now, you know, you'll be painting in your watercolors and you'll start using this technique, even though you don't realize it because you've worked on these compositions. You've done these enough for three, four times here that you'll, you'll actually use this technique and it'll really look great in your watercolors and you'll notice an improvement. I guarantee that you will see an improvement in your watercolor paintings using negative shape painting. It's a great technique. All the top pros use this technique all the time in watercolors, or I would say most, you know, probably 75 to 80% of all top professional watercolor artists will use this negative shape painting technique in their paintings. So you can even go back and check it out. Check out other artists that you learn on the top artists in the, of our time. Even the old masters use this technique a lot too, like Winslow Homer, Andrew Wyeth, you know, you name it. A lot of the Watercolor painters in history have used this technique, and I'm sure you're going to really find a lot of value in it. Okay, so we'll come back in just a few minutes. We'll get our last um, composition completed, and um, we'll have this uh, under our belts, okay? All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so we're going to finish up our last composition here. Again, we're talking about negative shape painting. We definitely are utilizing that uh, to the utmost extreme here on this uh, video. And again, this is an extreme beginners video. So we're using uh, synthetic brushes, your inexpensive uh, brushes that you can purchase, you know, um, for very little expense, as well as uh, this palette, the Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set 
my brushes, my palettes, my paper. It's all down below in the comment section below. So you can get started right now if it's your first time watching this video or if you've been watching for a couple weeks and you're kind of like not sure if you want to start, have some fun. Go ahead, grab some inexpensive art supplies, some paper, some brushes, some paints. Keep watching along with these videos. Hit subscribe down below. This way you get alerted each time we come up with a new video and we'll be covering everything watercolor on my channel. 24 seven is watercolor here on this channel. Uh, my channel here and um, you just paint along and you pray you know uh, paint along with the uh, videos no matter if it's a beginner's video or even if it's like you know an, an intermediate or you know um, expert style painting anything like that just paint along with anything and everything because uh, that's all you have to do is just get the basic concept of getting the drawing in with your pencil first and then you get in with your paints and your you know watercolor paints and your water and your brushes and get in and just do it just do it Okay, so now what we're going to do is, uh, and I wanted to mention too, before we um, start this, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take my cell phone, I'm going to take my mobile phone here, and I'm going to show you how you can get to my homepage and how you can get all the photographs of each of these paintings so that if you want to, you can go on to my homepage, Chris Petri, uh, on YouTube, my homepage, I'll have the photographs, I'll photograph each of these paintings, put them on my channel my home homepage in the community section. And what I'll do is at the end of the video, stick to the end of the video and we'll cover that. And I'll show you exactly how to get there, how you can click on all the different uh, buttons that you have to click on your, uh, either your cell phone, your home computer, your iPad, um, your Samsung phone, whatever you have. I'll show you how you get there and then you can download and print these out. So you can actually print out my paintings if you want and work from them that way so you can kind of see exactly what each one looks like isolated because here on this video I have all four of them kind of going at one time probably a lot easier if you can download the photos off of my uh, YouTube homepage community uh, tab and I'll show you exactly how to get there and how to do it uh, toward the end of the video okay after we're done with this last composition this here we're going to do uh, like a street scene. We're just going to have a fun style street scene. We're going to do the glazing technique, which means we're going to cover the whole paper with water first. I'll change out my water. So I take my um, water bucket, empty out the water, put fresh clean water in my water bucket. Then what we're going to do next is uh, clean up our palette. We want to start out with a fresh clean palette. Sometimes it seems a little bit, uh, you know, extra work that we have to do, but it really does make a big difference if we can keep all our colors really, really um, pristine when we're working. We don't want to keep taking paints that we've used for two or three paintings and using those over and over again because it gets, it, it, the, the paintings, or the paint loses its uh, vibrancy and its uh, clarity. So that's why I do this. I make sure I doesn't have to be perfect. Again, you don't have to go to the slop sink or the kitchen sink or whatever and clean up every little bit of paint, but if you get the majority of the paint off, you're perfect. You're good. Okay, now the next thing is we're going to take a pencil <clears throat> and just do a quick sketch out an idea of maybe, let's say, a street scene. So what I'll do is I'll just pretend that I'm going to uh, maybe see some buildings over here over on the top. So I'll just go with a dark pencil line like this. Maybe we have a building over here. Maybe it, it trails this way. Maybe it'll be kind of like we're looking down an avenue. So we have a building here, comes down. Maybe there's an avenue here, like this. So we'll make that like so. And we'll do another building going this way. And maybe this building is trailing up like this steep angle like this. So you can see I have a steep angle like this for the top of this building. This building's a little softer of an angle like that. And we'll just have a... And basically we're just creating like almost... Uh, we're building like some cubes here. Some cubes. That's all really it is is some buildings. Basically some cubes. So you can almost see it as... Um, if we have some scrap paper, let me see if I can find some scrap paper here. Oh, do we have anything here? Okay, we'll use this here. Um, we're just basically making some cube shapes like this. So 
So that's sort of like a cube here, three-dimensional cube, and then over here the same thing. This one's a little steeper, like this. Like this. And that creates those buildings, the city, the citified feeling, the buildings, the architecture, and then we have some roadway here, and maybe we'll put some figures in here too. All right, so we have our buildings here. Let's just create a few windows. Just make some quick indications of some windows here. Maybe three floors here. I'm just sketching in some quick window look, you know, a couple looks of some windows here. Same thing over here, maybe a few windows here. Maybe another couple here. I'll just make some marks on the paper like this. Maybe a door here. Maybe there's a door here too. Like that. Okay, and then there's maybe some windows over here too. Let's make a couple rectangles just lightly. I'm just making some pencil sketches here. Doesn't have to be too perfect or anything like that. And the same thing up here, we'll make a couple of large windows up here. You just want to keep the windows on the same level, if you can imagine. So you want to have the windows like this. So the windows want to be on the same level, like this. So if these sticks or these lines are windows, you just want to have them follow those lines, the um, perspective, the lines of perspective. You just remember here, if we have a level line here, as we go up, the lines go on an angle like this. Same thing here, one, two, we just one, two, three, one, two, three, and then over here, same thing, one, two, three. Keep them level, same thing, level, one, two, three, like that. But I think that's good, and we're going to do the uh, all the, uh, the um, glazing technique on this, which means we're going to wet the whole paper and put a lot of beautiful wash on here. So you see how we have our buildings here. We're going to put some figures. Let's do that. Let's have some. Um, there's going to be another building over here, and this is going to be it's just some buildings in the distance. It's going to be dark in here. Then we're going to have some, we're going to say, let's make our figures straight across the painting. Let's keep the, the heads of the figures at the same level. So if we take our ruler and just say, let's make our heads of our figures all the same height um, in this painting. And we'll make them about, about this height here. We'll, let's go down a little bit like that. That's good. Make a light pencil line across. And then when you make that light pencil line, that's where you want to keep all your... So this here, this first figure is going to be large. Like this, walking. And then this figure over here is a little, little bit smaller. And then this figure over here is even smaller yet. So let's have three figures. One, two, and three. They're each different sizes as they go further in the distance. They're smaller, but the, all the heads are at the same height of that pencil line we put in, that very, very light pencil line. So that's all you have to remember is if you're going to create some figures in your painting, keep all the head heads of your figures, no matter how big you make your figures. So if you want to make your figure this large in the foreground, fine. Keep it at the same level. If you want to make a distant figure in the distance here, like this, make it like that. And this one here is going to be like this. Just keep all the heads at the same height, and that will give you the proper um, amount of... Um, that will give you the um, perspective you need to keep your figures looking good in your uh, street scenes or your landscape paintings, what have you. Okay, so let's get started with the painting portion. And uh, first thing that we did say was we were going to use the... Um, 
glazing technique now, which means we're going to cover the whole painting with a light wash first, let it dry 100%, and then come back and paint the uh, highlights and the darks and highlights, the darks and the lights, or whatever we want to, on top of that first glazing, which is very light. So the first thing we do is figure out what do we want to use for our first light glazing. Let's use a um, orangey um, yellow, kind of a buttery, nice buttery yellow, orange kind of wash with a little bit of red. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm getting in some red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow. Kind of like that beautiful sunlight color, the color of light. And then I'm just going to, first thing before I do anything, is I'm going to wet the paper a little bit with some fresh, clean water. Just like this. Just add a little bit of fresh, clean water to your paper, like this. And then we start going in and grabbing our orange and gold color and just kind of just place it on your paper let it flow on down and remember this is only the first glazing of your painting so you're gonna recall that you're going to let this dry 100 percent okay and if you cover that whole paper with that nice light glazing of that orangey red very light though, remember we're not going to, you can go in and add some highlights, add some more strong color if you want to, as you go. And that is it. You could add some blue up here like this for the sky kind of blend that down in there some of that sky that blue get it in there a little bit and then if you want to if it's too dark no worries you grab yourself a tissue paper towel and just blot up a little bit take some paper towel or tissue and just just blot it up like that and there you have it. You have some beautiful color. You could even add some blue down here, some blue wash while the paper is still wet. Add some blue, maybe a little bit of blue wash down here. Cool, cool blue wash down here where it's cooler at the bottom of the painting, closer to the ground. Okay. And that is it. Let this dry 100%. And that's the key to the glazing technique. And of course, I always mention, <clears throat> I have a book out, <clears throat> just came out a couple years ago, actually. But it's my. I'm really proud of my new book that I created because it covers the, all the glazing technique and a la prima technique. So we've been using the a la prima technique mostly, using just the go right in and paint the whole painting start to finish one at one time. But here we're using the glazing technique, and this is this glazing technique and method is just as powerful, and a ton of artists, profesh, top professional artists these days are using the glazing technique. A lot of artists use it. So I cover both of these techniques in my book, and you could check out my new book below in the comments section. Not to mention, in my comments section, you'll see a quick two-minute video where I show you each and every single page of my book so you can kind of see everything that's in there. I have tons of paintings in there, beautiful paintings that you can work from, and then all the colors that I used, the techniques and methods that I used for each of those paintings, it's all going to be in there. And mostly I focus on the glazing technique and the a la prima technique using both of those techniques, which is the two predominant techniques that all professional high-level artists use for their paintings. So you'll, you're getting like a lot of value for... Um, what I'm offering for my book. And again, I show you all the paintings and pages in my book in that short video. So before you buy, you watch the video, you see what's in the book, you'll be excited. You'll see how many excellent looking paintings are in there. My best work that I've done over the last five to 10 years is are in that book. And then you, you know, like I said, I'm hoping you're going to purchase my book. It also helps me as an artist. If you're purchasing my book, um, that helps, um, you know, a little bit of uh, money to keep coming in so I can keep creating videos and buying art supplies and things like that. That's how we support our artists. We buy their work, their paintings, their books, whatever uh, artists are uh, offering to people when you purchase things like this, books, paintings, 
brushes if you have you know some artists have brushes they sell they have their own brush lines and all these kind of good things it's just a way to say thank you and and also um support your your artists i'm hoping you'll i'm hoping you'll support me as well as all your artists that your, your favorite artists that you watch on youtube and follow okay all right so let's come back after this dries 100 percent. so we're talking about either letting this dry for a few hours or using a blow dryer if you can you know if you want to blow dry this in like five ten minutes You'll be fine. Then you can start in with your secondary washes, which we're going to cover next, and that'll be it. We'll finish up this video and uh, have a great time doing it. All right, so this has dried now. I let this dry about maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes, so the paper is pretty dry. And then you can also, again, use a blow dryer if you want to. Um, I might use a few different brushes. I might use um, uh, like a mop brush like this. And this a mop brush is really good. It gives you a little more water. Uh, in your brush and color in your brush to uh, work from. So I'll use some of this here. Um, we're going to start to uh, mix up our colors now for the um, darker darks of the uh... so I'm going to use oranges and reds, brown, um, touch of black here like this A bit of purple, blue, blue, purple, touch of black <clears throat> to get some darks in here. So next thing we're going to do is um, start to mix out some shadow colors. Um, purple is a good shadow color. And again, I'm using my uh, mop brush here. So we have some good darks here. Warm and cool everywhere. Reds, blues. Okay, so now we're working more of the darks to try to start to um, put in our dark values now, our dark tonal values. Um, we're going to get some black up here for our darkest darks. Black, brown, purple, blue. Okay, and then you can also take a small paper towel or tissue. Have that in your hand at all times. Paper towel or tissue to dry off your brush so you don't have too much paint on there. Sometimes you need to kind of scale down how much paint you have on your brush. But let's start getting the darks in here. This is going to be dark in this area here of the painting. And we'll paint, again, negative shape painting, we're painting around these figures to make these figures appear. Okay, and there we have it. We're talking about negative shape painting, and perfect way to do it is we're going to paint around the tops of these figures, just like that. Okay. And there's some dark darks in here, in this central central area of the painting. Then we're going to go with some orange and reds here, just to kind of get it back to So now I'm using the this mop brush, which has a ton of water in it. If you can imagine, I'll use a little bit of this here to kind of show you. But this brush has a ton of water. You see how much water I can have just with one dip of the water in the in the water bucket you can see how much water i have in that brush right there tons of water so this really does help this is really good to have your uh, watercolor brush a mop brush is great to have in your collection of brushes this is an alvaro castanet mop brush and this is a number 10 slash zero and i use these brushes for many years now and so now i'm just going to Carefully do some negative shape painting again in the distance. Some buildings. Here's some building. Buildings in the distance. And then I blend that up into the sky. Like that. I get some more dark darks. I want to have really plenty of dark darks in the down here. 
even some black. Get, get some aggressive blacks in here. Like this. This will be the focal point, incidentally, in your painting, where you put your darkest darks. Okay, so I'm just painting around those figures. Again, we talked about that. I paint around my the, these figures, these uh, figures that are walking on the street. I'm painting around them with dark darks, and that is the negative shape painting of the paint of this actual composition. And then from there, we kind of have a real good feel for the figures in the painting right there. Then from this point on, we can start to grab our, our brush and we start to go in and get our windows. So you're just going to get some window shapes in here like so. And, uh, you know, get some window shapes in here. But these shapes here that we're doing, the window shapes and things, this is just secondary to the painting. It's not really that in, that important. It's sort of on the side of the painting. We're going to make, let's make some, uh, I'll tell you what, let's make a little bit of some greens over here. Green and orange. Green and orange makes a nice, um, that makes a really nice uh, olivey green. Okay, so you do some trees over here on the side. Some splashing, you can get some splashing going on here. Like this over here on the left side of your painting. Lots of water. You're exploiting what the watercolor medium is all about. Tons of water, flowing properties of watercolor, the water, the washes. Okay, you have some of your really nice greens here, maybe a little bit of yellows here. Some yellow, lemony yellow up top here where the sunlight is, maybe. And then a little more of the bluer green, purpley green down here shadowy areas like that okay so you have some trees in your city scene here and we'll just continue on here make a few more windows but again just don't get too you know fussy about it just get some windows in there just like this okay You'll just see I'm making my windows here. No big deal. Try to go quickly, expeditiously. This really works nicely if you can kind of work through your painting quickly like this. Um, we're going to have some cornice work up here. So you're, you're going to have uh, up top of your buildings, there's cornices. You know, those fancy ornate features on the top of the, the buildings. So you're going to do those up here. Same thing up here. Get some of that black, really dark darks up here where the cornice is up there of the building there. And over here. Okay, so you have some cornices up here, the top of the building. You have some window sills. Maybe there's some shadows, some shadows on this side over here of the buildings. Purple, purple shadows. And the same thing here. Maybe there's a shadow going across this way. Okay, you got that feeling of shadowing. Alright, 
<clears throat> we are really a couple of more details here. There might be some bands across the building, some stone architecture that you can put across your your buildings here. That is it. That looks really good. Now uh, a little bit of purple shadowing here too, down at the bottom of the buildings. And I blot up a little bit here. Fresh clean paper towels if you need to. You can always rescue an area or, you know, for for me I would empty, because this water is really murky, you can see how that water is really murky, I would quickly empty my water, come over, grab more fresh clean water, I pour fresh clean water into my bucket, water pail, water container, and I add a little bit of water, fresh clean water over this section right here. So if you ever have an area that starts to get a little bit, uh, you know, out of control, put some fresh water on it, and then you take your paper towel. There you go, and you lift up. Looks good. Clean out a section of your paper like this, or your palette. Get some of that blue again. Put some blue in there for the sky and let that infuse into the other washes. And that looks much better. So we've just been able to repair a section of our painting right there, and then we have some dark darks here. We'll keep this dark over here. We'll, we'll add some orange. Maybe there's some dark darks over here. Always good to have, um, you know, some... Maybe there's a few cars over here. Let's put a few cars over here. Since we have this dark dark here, let's... make sure we have a couple other darks here and there in the painting. couple of cars over here and then what we'll do is we'll we'll let this dry 100% and we'll put some uh, red lights on our cars We could create a couple lights over here. I would take my paper towel and then make a, like a square shape with my paper towel like this. Like that and then take this over here and do, maybe I can get a car over here too. There we go, perfect. All right, so what I'll do is I wanna put a car over here on the right side as well. We have a couple cars over here. I'll put a car over here too. So what I'll do is we'll let this dry now 100% and then we'll start we'll pick back up again so i'll put a couple black dark darks here and over here too i want to put a little bit of trees over here so i'll do a back again green green orange green and orange green and orange maybe a little bit of the brown and orange here just to get an olivey green and we're going to do some trees over here too. Okay, so now we have we 
we have trees, a little bit of foliage and trees on both sides of the painting. A little bit of our, uh, yellow here. A little bit of yellow here. And then maybe even some over here too. Maybe there's a little bit of trees over here. Okay, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to uh, work the uh, glazing technique. If you have paint that floods to a different area, fold up your, there we go, fold up your uh, paper towel into a straight line and then just set it down on the paper if you have to and then press on it and then you can kind of straighten out a few lines if you want to and you can always go over those lines and then bring that color back over to the line this way like this so this way with the dark wash once it dries a little bit you want to let that dry a bit but you can also let the colors flow together okay perfect let it good good all right, so let's let this dry 100%, and then we'll come back and just do the final details to the figures in this painting, and we should be set, and then we'll just uh, have completed all four of our negative shape paintings, as well as a couple little other tidbits of information that we have that we want to kind of share too. So we're not just using one method or one technique or one idea. We're kind of implementing different techniques and methods within this main idea of negative shape painting and then also too we use different things like color dominance here with the gold colors here we're kind of talking about the glazing technique wetting the whole paper getting a lots of flowing beautiful watery washes on everything and kind of letting everything mix and mingle so you have that really beautiful classic watercolor look there and um, so let's keep going though we, we're, we want to finish up by just doing the touch-up details here and then don't forget at the end of the video I am going to go onto myself mobile phone and show you how to get all of these photographs of each of these paintings. So if you want to see how to get the paintings, each of these paintings in a photograph form on my YouTube channel, Chris Petri on YouTube, it's simple enough. I'll show you exactly how to get to the spot where you need to, to get to these photographs of each of these paintings. And that'll help you too. If you want to paint each of these individually and you don't want to have to see all of the paintings in one spot like we're doing here. I know it's a little awkward seeing all the paintings at one time as we're working on our board here, but in any case, don't worry about it. I'll show you how you get to that spot where you can pick each of these paintings, any one you want, and print it out on your home printer, or you can, you know, work from there. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. All right, so we are back here now. I think the best thing to do is to kind of do the finishing touches to this last painting that we just did. Let's let's try to consolidate a little bit here. Maybe we can remove this here. And then maybe we can remove this like this. Maybe we'll peel off the tape. So it's just a matter of when we're working like this with small compositions, we can actually now toward the end of the process we can kind of remove our tape and uh, again at the end of the video in about 10 minutes from now 15 minutes from now we're going to go over how you can find each of these individual paintings in photograph form and then you can download it on your internet and use it for your um, reference material if you want to. We'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so we're going to lift this up. Okay, now what I'll do is we'll take this And we'll just trim these down into smaller. OK, 
Okay. Okay, I'll set these aside. Let's finish up this one here that we were just working on, the city scape, the uh, street scene. Okay, so we'll put all those aside up here. We'll take this like this. Now what we can do is we'll isolate this one like we're doing now. And we'll just take a little tape and Put a little bit of tape up here to tape down our painting and maybe a, some tape down here like this this tape has lost its stick for some reason i think i just i bought extra tape a couple of years ago and now some of the tape has yeah it works pretty good actually that's good all right so now um we're going to actually use our Simply Simmons number nine, like this. And we'll go straight in and get some orangey colors. And we're gonna do the taillights for these, these cars here that are on the, and then red. So we'll change up a little bit. This one's red. Okay, so we have some cars here, another red, some taillights over here. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure I have uh, a tissue with me or a paper towel to dry off my brush and I'll just rinse off the brush, dry off the hairs of the brush and then I just want to pick up some of this um, wash mix here and just kind of put the tops of the cars here like that and then some maybe some mirrors on there on the cars okay so that's dark there okay that's the other car there Okay, so we have a few vehicles here in our street scene, and then we're going to have our um, figures here. So let's do some, maybe this person is walking this way. Okay, and they have some, maybe some blue, bluish green uh, clothing on here, like this. And then maybe some darker pants or skirt. We have a female or a male figure here. Okay, so that's our figure coming towards us this way. You could grab a little bit of black, um, maybe to make the figure's pants or skirt, dress, whatever, you know, male or female, it doesn't matter. Um, you can make that interesting like that. And then a little bit more red, orange, maybe for the hands over here. So you could put some orange and red here for the hands. Maybe they're carrying a bag, you can make a little bag over here. Like that. And then, okay, we have a couple more figures over here, left and right. Let's mm, do the same thing, maybe some blue. And maybe some yellow. For the legs, for the pants, maybe. Maybe some dark darks, black for the um, head. Maybe this figure is behind. So we're looking at the back of the figure with some long hair, like that. And then maybe this figure here, maybe we'll do the same thing. We'll do a forward facing figure here, forward facing. So we have red for the complexion, like this one here. Um, add a little more red there. And some more red there. Okay, so those are forward facing figures. And maybe for that figure there, we can go with um, maybe some purple. Like that.
All right, I think that looks pretty good. So we have some figures in there. The next thing we can do to, to sort of um, make this um, street scene just, uh, you know, kick it up a notch, we can use some uh, titanium white. Titanium white, like this, with a tiny touch of uh, orange or yellow, or both, mixed together. In the top of the tube of the paint, like this, just to give that white a little bit of a golden touch, or just a little bit of golden orangey tone. And I'll just a little bit of that. See if we can now. If you can't seem to, when you find that you can't get a splash or two out of your paint, then you know off your brush, then you know that you have to take your a palette, clean up a spot on your palette. And we dry it too, so we don't want any water, too much water on there. So I'll just dry off this here, wipe it up, dry it off. And I take just a touch of water here, like this, as you can see, like that. Then pick up a little bit of water out of my water bucket and just make a little bit of a puddly white, off white, which is like some golden white there. And just do a couple splashes like this that gives the the um, feeling of light sparkling in the painting then you can also put a little bit of light highlights on the tops of the figures heads like that if it's too much no problem blot it up and that's it you might have to wait till it either that or you just will use instead of using this puddly paint we're going to use just straight tube paint right out of the top of the tube of this titanium white and there you go see now you can make a nice little couple uh, highlights there like this on your figures heads and shoulders see we're heads and shoulders above the best here as we paint you're doing a great job out there so uh, trust me if you're working along with us here um, we're covering all the methods and techniques you need in watercolor to create whatever style paintings you want to you take it to your own level you're the artist you're going to figure out how you want to have your own style in your watercolor painting but if you're starting out and you're doing all the fundamentals like we're doing here you'll learn all the fundamentals of watercolor and a lot of the innovative techniques that we use in methods and we use in watercolor as professionals and if you're just starting out you'll learn all of them in the beginning and then as you're continuing on in painting then you're going to start to develop your own style and your own techniques as you go. That's going to be your own individual look and feel for your watercolors. So I'm hoping you're really excited about working here on this channel with me here. Let's um, do one more thing. Let's show you how you're going to look up these paintings on my YouTube channel to uh, download the photographs of each of these paintings if you'd like to. Okay, so let's do that next. I'm just going to take a quick break and then I'll set up my camera so you can see the um, phone that I have and how to get to this these paintings here okay all right <clears throat> so now we're at the end of the video and I did mention that I'm going to show you how you can find photographs of my uh, videos of the paintings that we're doing in our videos so uh, many of you had asked about this uh, many years ago and I sort of you know finally got around to really um, figuring out how to put my actual photographs of my paintings that we're doing here in these tutorials onto my uh, YouTube channel. And now I've figured it out. I took the time, spent hours to figure out how I'm going to do that. I got it all together and now we can do it. So the basic thing is all you have to do is you go to, so let's say you just look up any one of my videos. So let's say you're working on this video, Extreme Beginners Watercolors. You're already seeing this is the home page here or this is the actual video of one of my videos, any video that I have, then all you have to do is just click on Chris Petrie right below the uh, name of the video. So if you click on Chris Petrie right below the title of the video, that brings you to my homepage. Then from there, let's see how we have to do this. We have to go one more time to my homepage. And then when you see my homepage, it's really simple. You'll see this. You'll see my studio here with my lights, my window in my studio with the bird on the sill. So this is easy to know. When you found my homepage on YouTube, it's real simple. It's Chris Petrie. 
And when you click on Chris Petrie, you'll see my picture of my um, window in my studio with a bird on the window on this window sill, and my desk over to the left, um, and also my working table with my camera and all my lights on the right hand side. And you'll see my picture here, my name, and so forth. Now, once you get to that, all you have to do is just go down here to the right where you see the word community. It's as simple as that. All you have to do is find my homepage. And again, we'll, we'll zoom in on this here. So when you find my homepage, it's going to look like this. That's my homepage right there. Now I'm going to try to see if I'm, if this looks good on camera here. Okay, that's good. So that's my homepage right there. So when you see this picture here, a photograph above my, um, my portrait here photograph that's that's my home page and then it's as simple as going to community which is right below and I'll just zoom out a little bit like this and you'll see community right here you'll see keep the tab community you click on community and there you have it you'll see all my photographs of all my paintings that I've done recently you see how that is these are all the latest videos that I've done and all the pictures of those videos, the final finished paintings. So it's as simple as that. Find your way to my homepage and you'll find all of my latest paintings, the finished paintings in our tutorials that we're working on. And this way at least you see the exact look of the exact finished painting that we're working on and then you can work from that. That's the best way. I'll always advocate that, uh, you know, if you're going to paint from anything in the beginning, especially if you're just starting out as a beginner in watercolor, you're going to want to paint from the finished paintings of whatever artist you're following, whatever paintings you like the most, whether it's myself or Charles Reed or Alvaro Cassignette or Winslow Homer, whoever it is, Andrew Wyeth, get, get the finished paintings, whoever you want to follow and paint, you know, if you want to paint a painting that looks like mine or any other artist, if you're looking at their finished painting, it's a lot easier to paint from that because if you're trying to paint from a photograph or real life in the beginning, it's a lot more difficult. Whereas if you're painting from a finished watercolor painting, much easier, tremendously easier actually. And that's why I also say my book, I have tons of new paintings in my book, all my best of my best paintings in my new book, Chris Petrie, Methods for Success. I hope you're going you're gonna to pick up my book, very inexpensive. And right down in the comments section below, you'll see my book, uh, a two minute video, and it shows you every single page in my book. So you'll see every single page, every single painting in the book. That's a really great thing too, because then you can kind of see all the different paintings you can work from and, and actually use as you go to paint. Okay, so I'm glad you joined along. We'll see you soon on the next video. I wish you the best. Happy painting and enjoy the process of watercolor, and we'll see you soon on the next video.